video 11 everybody now I've been looking at this and uh, uh, for an hour or so and I've decided that I want to continue it with paint so I'm going to switch to acrylic paint now what I've done before that is I've sprayed it with a workable fixative and I'm hoping that that will bed down some of the charcoal although as you can see I don't know if you can see on my fingertip there's still charcoal coming off and I gave it quite a heavy spray um, so what I'm planning to do now is to uh, cover it with a clear gesso um, and then that'll, once that's dry, that'll stop the charcoal bleeding into the paint, uh, ble ble bleeding into the acrylic paint, uh, and it, meaning that it will go down clean, the paint will go down clean. Uh, look, I could have continued this with... The... Hi everyone. So this is the next day now, and uh, what, I've, what I've done here, after three or four coats of um, fixative, workable fixative, I've then covered this in um, clear gesso. Uh, it's a Liquitex clear gesso, and uh, it's, as you can see, it's completely fixed the charcoal. Okay, it's... Obviously, some of the nuances uh, that I had there are gone because it's, you know, it, it makes it uh, react almost like a paint. So, so there's been a bit of um, a smudging and bleeding of the charcoal. But anyway, it's it's now fixed, and uh, I, you know, any any subsequent paint I put on this will go down without uh, picking up any of the charcoal underneath. Now, clear gesso. If you haven't got clear gesso, it doesn't matter. Any, any um, acrylic medium will work. This is uh, matte medium, I could have used that. Um, acrylic painting medium, that would do. Any, any medium that dries clear, I mean, you could even use PVA. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just a, a block uh, uh, to, to enable uh, you to paint over the charcoal without, uh, pick, you know, without the whole thing becoming mud. Okay, now at this stage, I think it's really important to um, to start loosely and gesturally, but, you know, somewhat gesturally. Um, reason being is that if you tighten up and start doing, you know, working on tiny areas, you, you'll fall into the trap of copying, and that's not what this exercise is about. We, we don't want to copy the reproduction. What we want to do is try and un unearth uh, the energies, the rhythms, the pictorial forces that are at play here, um, which we can take into our own studio work. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I'm at the moment I'm just trying to reproduce, in a very general sense, these rhythms. Um, and also, I'm looking at the light. So, I, I started with the lightest light, which is the, the, the highlights on the, um, on the limbs. Now, e each of those highlights, if you like, were the lightest lights, lightest lights, darkest darks, they all have a rhythm. They all have a, um, you know, a sweeping energy that um, you've got to try and capture uh, with your brush, with your mark making. Um, in terms of the palette, I've introduced uh, a few more colours. Uh, one is ultramarine blue. The other one is thalo blue. And quite different, much, much colder blue, this one. Um, and a tiny bit of cadmium red. And what I'm trying to do here with the Payne's Grey is to m mix that uh, in, in most of the other colours. In, in a sense, I'm using it as a mother colour so that it will draw together the harmonies. Um, so, yeah, be really expressive at this stage. Uh, you, you've got your drawing underneath, so you've always got that um, uh, home base to come back to if you, you, know, if you feel you get lost. So don't be afraid to draw over the contour lines. Um, expression and energy, uh, energy in the mark is more important uh, at this stage.